we just finished talking about a synthesis of aniline or aromatic amines. And we can use those to generate benzene diazonium ions and then further use those in Sandmeyer reactions. So let's look at one of these Sandmeyer reactions and then we'll examine the um, mechanism for generating these uh, benzene diazonium uh, ions. So step one is going to generate the benzene diazonium ion. And we'll need to do this at a reduced temperature. Somewhere below 10 degrees Celsius, um, I would err on the side of closer to zero. Because these benzene diazonium ions have a tendency to be explosive and they're quite reactive. This second step is actually the Sandmeyer reaction, and that's where we're using that uh, benzene diazonium ion um, to do a reaction, in this case, a bromination. So this is kind of what we're looking at. So let's look at um, that first process for uh, generating this benzene diazonium ion. <laughs> Hopefully I have enough space on the page. So here is our nitrite. All right, so we have sodium nitrite. This is NO2, not NO3, nitrite. And we're going to protonate that to generate nitrous acid. Now we'll have nitrous acid, which is a weak acid. Like so. Now we're going to protonate this. And the goal here is really to generate a, a good leaving group. So we're going to generate water, which is a good leaving group. And surprise, it's going to leave. When we do that, we're going to generate a nitrosium ion. Um, nitrosonium ion. So, oxygen, triple bond, nitrogen, and plus charge on that. That is one of the resonance forms for this. Um, let's look at the other resonance form that will immediately result from this, which is where we have a plus charge on the nitrogen, which is probably the more dominant um, form because now we've put the formal charge on the less electronegative ion. But in any case, this will exist in the solution. Now that we've prepared the nitrosonium ion, then we can use this in our reaction. So we've got a lone pair on that nitrogen. 
and it's going to attack this nitrogen right here. And really we could use either of these uh, resonance structures for this. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now begins the task of slowly moving protons around and removing them from the molecule here. So we've initially generated a new nitrogen nitrogen bond right here. And we've got our oxygen right there. There's a positive charge here. And now we're going to start removing the hydrogens off of this nitrogen. So we'll begin by adding in a little bit of one of our favorite bases that is usually in a lot of these reactions, water. And that will generate an N-nitrosamine. Next, we're going to shuttle that proton over onto the oxygen here because we're going to want to remove this oxygen uh, during this process. So we've got the protonated water somewhere here in the solution. We'll use that. And then uh, after we do that, we're going to transfer some electrons in between the two nitrogens here. And ultimately, we're working towards the benzene diazonium ion, um, which is a nitrogen that has a triple bond in between it and is attached to the benzene ring. And as you may guess, that will be a good leaving group. It just takes a little bit of work to get there. So now we're going to move electrons in between the nitrogen nitrogen bond. Uh, then we'll move some over onto the oxygen here, generate more of an alcohol. And then surprise, we're gonna protonate that alcohol and turn it into water. And then we're going to remove the water and generate the benzene diazonium ion. So let me see if I can get that done here, hopefully pretty quickly. So here's my OH. I'm gonna go ahead and protonate that. Next. I am going to shift some electrons around and have my water leave. And then we will have generated the diazonium ion. Okay, so got these two electrons right here. Shift those in between, have the water leave. And here we are. Plus charge on that nitrogen. Now, if we look here, there's an excellent leaving group just waiting to happen. 
nitrogen gas. And generally, if we have a reaction that can form nitrogen gas, uh, some of the things that we like to call those are explosives. So that's why we'll need to keep this particular species cold. Under 10 degrees Celsius, I would keep it a little colder than that because this is very reactive. Now this can do quite a few different reactions. So starting from um, the benzene diazonium ion, so we can do what are called the Sandmeyer reactions. We take this and if we combine it with copper chloride, copper one chloride, then we can generate the chloride where this uh, diazonium ion was. We can do the same thing with bromine. Same reaction, same kind of result. Uh, we can do the same thing with cyanide. Um, we can do a slightly different reaction to make uh, the iodide. Just use potassium iodide. In these cases, we really need the copper to help the reaction along. Um, in iodine's case, we can just do it by providing it a source of iodine. We can fluorinate it. Uh, remember how we talked about the difficulties in converting um, an aromatic ring or fluorinating an aromatic ring? using molecular fluorine, well, this is a way to do it. So we have this reagent right here. Step two, provide some heat. And then at that point, we can have a fluorinated aromatic ring, like so. We could also convert this into the phenol by adding water and um, copper one oxide. And so copper two nitrate. Generate the phenol. And it's also possible to simply remove uh, this group all together by using uh, a phosphoric uh, derivative. Uh, phosphoric acid. So there's quite a number of reactions that we can do from this leaving group here. And of course, during the course of that reaction, we would generate nitrogen gas. So I suppose I should write that up here. So this is how to generate the benzene diazonium ion and how to use it in the Sandmeyer reactions.